Good morning, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Jew Jets Show. It's week five. This week, we play the Denver Broncos. And in the offseason, we all circled this game on our calendars because of what Sean Payton said about the Jets and our offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. They got our organization pissed off. So, so of course, some drama brewed between these two teams. And now the beef that was made between these two teams is finally going to get settled this week. Also going to talk about whether or not the Jets defense can stay on track. If Zach Wilson's going to keep rolling. If Brees Hall is going to ball out. All that and so much more. And of course, whether or not we're going to win. So in five seconds, let's go ahead and start this thing. So starting off on the offensive side of things, the Broncos defense has been awful this year. Statistically, they're the worst unit in the league. They did allow 700 yards and 70 points to Miami in week three, which definitely has hindered their stats. But nonetheless, their defense outside of a week one performance where they shut down the Raiders offense has been pretty bad this year. I mean, since week one, every team has at least thrown for 299 yards and has at least rushed for over 120 yards on Denver. Not exactly a great look for the Broncos defense. The pass rush also hasn't been great to start the year either. They do get Frank Clark back this week or at least are supposed to get Frank Clark back this week, so we'll have to see if he makes any impact in their pass rush. But nonetheless, the Jets offensive line has been balling these last two weeks to going up against a struggling Denver pass rush. We'll definitely have to see if that plays a factor in this game offensively. And injury-wise on Denver's defense, they didn't have Justin Simmons, Josie Jewell, or Mike Purcell last week, but all three of those guys return to practice today, Wednesday, October 4th. So we'll be interested to see if they play and what impact the two will have in that game. I mean, of course, all these players have been on the field for the Broncos this season, have been a part of some of their bad defensive performances, but we'll just have to wait and see what they're going to look like on the field with these players, of course, playing for the Broncos if they are active this week. But bottom line is Denver's defense has been bad to start the season off, and Zach Wilson and company balled the flip out last week. Zach Wilson had the best game he ever played. I didn't even put arguably in front of that because I think it's without a doubt the best game Zach Wilson has ever played. He completed 28 of his 39 passes for 245 yards and two touchdowns along with 14 rushing yards. Some of the throws Zach Wilson was making last week are some throws that I've never seen him make in his career. He looked like a legit NFL quarterback, which is something he hasn't done all but what? three times in his career prior to last week. So because of that, because he's only looked like a real NFL quarterback three times in his career, it does make me cautious heading into this game. Because yeah, he bought out last week, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to have a great game against a bad defense. This is Zach Wilson we're talking about and not Aaron Rodgers. So of course, I'm a little nervous, a little cautious heading into this game because, yeah, on paper, it seems like Zach Wilson's going to ball out. But we know how Zach Wilson is. Is he going to get the jitters? Is he going to not be as confident as he was last week? What's going to happen with Zach Wilson? Is the play calling going to be the same as it was last week? Because we know the play calling Nathaniel Hankett had definitely influenced the way Zach Wilson played. So are the Jets going to go back to that sort of play calling? I don't know why we would go away from it because it worked beautiful for Zach Wilson last week. So if the Jets can call a similar game and not have Zach Wilson completely break down like he's done in the other three games a season where he hasn't looked that great, then I do think we can have another good performance out of Zach Wilson and get this offense looking modern once again. The pass protection also last week was great with this new offensive line. Did talk about that earlier with Denver's pass rush struggles. That's definitely going to help Zach Wilson out and throw in the football as well. The Jets also said there's going to be no more pitch count for Brees Hall, which is going to be very important because Denver's run defense this season also has been very terrible. I mean, outside of their week one performance where they shut down Josh Jacobs, every team has been able to run the football against the Broncos. Bears did a great job of it. Miami definitely did a great job of it, having 305 yards on the ground. And then Washington also did a great job of it as well. So now that there's no more pinch count for Brees Hall and he's coming back to the place where he tore his ACL last season, he's looking to get his revenge. He's looking to ball out and... I'm thinking Brees Hall is going to have a pretty great game, or at least that's what everything on paper is signaling. How much the Jets are actually going to hand it off to Brees Hall and how much no more pitch count means for his carries 
is Delphi going to be interested? How much is Dalvin Cook going to get the ball? How much are Michael Carter going to get the ball? What's the snap distribution going to look like? I'm assuming no more pinch count means Bruce Hall getting at least 65% of the snaps, but we will have to see. But I'm definitely expecting offensive success this week. I don't think we're going to see another Zach Wilson met down. I don't think he's going to play as great as he did last week, but I still think he's going to play solid. I mean, as long as Zach Wilson can play better than what he did the last three weeks, I'm not, I'm not talking about slightly better, just better overall than what he did the first three weeks. Not exactly get up to the week four standards, but just play better than the first three weeks. If Brees Hall can ball out, then I do think we're going to see offensive success from the Jets in this game. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, the Broncos offense has played well this year. They're currently the 14th best unit in the league statistically. They are a pass first offense being led by Russell Wilson. On the season, he has 1,014 passing yards, nine touchdowns, and two interceptions. The run offense Really hasn't gotten going this year. Javante Williams also is hurt. He might play. He injured his hip last week against the Chicago Bears. Missed pretty much the entire game. But the injury was said to not be super serious. So... He might play this week. He might not. It's definitely going to be something to monitor. And their offense line also has been all right this year. They've allowed 11 sacks, which is the same amount as the New York Jets. You know, like the Jets offensive line, they've had some players that have played well. They've had some players that haven't played well. It's just kind of been a mixed bunch for the Broncos offensive line this year. And we're going to need the Jets pass rush to step up this week. We're going to need them to step up. They've been creating a lot of pressures throughout these first four weeks, and they're going to need to turn some of those pressures into sacks this week because DJ Reed might not play. And if DJ Reed doesn't play, that would mean Bryce Hall would be the New York Jets starting quarterback alongside Sauce Gardner because Brandon Eccles isn't playing this week due to a hamstring injury. DJ Reed apparently suffered a concussion in last week's loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. When he suffered that concussion, I do not know. He wasn't taken out of the game because of it. He played every single snap. So you would assume the concussion isn't super serious, but concussions are things that are just super hard to gauge. Just because you weren't taken out of game could mean it's the worst concussion of your life, or it can mean it's just, you know, a simple, you know, a concussion that's going to leave your body after like three days. You never know with concussions. But hopefully DJ Reed plays. If not, we're going to have to hope this Jets pass rush steps up and Sauce Gardner continues to do his thing. We are getting Tony Adams back in the secondary this week as well, so that's some extra secondary help. But nonetheless, pass rush is going to have to step up this week, regardless of DJ Reed plays or not. But are the New York Jets going to win this football game? Well, I've been flip-flopping it this entire week. The Broncos are the betting favorite, and my gut is kind of leaning towards the Broncos, but I just think the Jets are going to win this game. Screw what my gut says. I'm going with the New York Jets to, I guess, upset the Denver Broncos 23-19. Let me guys know your score prediction down below. And I'm your host, Jets, signing off for now. See you guys later. Peace.